Okay, uh, welcome to financial accounting. Uh, so we are here to um, look at uh, financial accounting and how is it it's examined, especially for the CPA course, um, and especially for our students that are sitting exams in the next uh, about now, uh, maybe four, five months from now. So the CPA course has uh, a syllabus. Uh, this syllabus was issued in 2023 and it encompasses all the papers that are on the syllabus. So as you can see from my screen, we have uh, various papers here. Uh, some of these papers uh, are papers that you might have um, had people talk talk about, but these are papers that you're going to interface on your journey of CPA. So we have um, financial accounting, which is paper one, and then we have economics, entrepreneurship, paper two, we have quantitative techniques, paper three, uh, we have quite a number of papers. And um, once you get a copy of this syllabus, it is much easier for you to easily go through and take note of um, whatever we have. So um, in terms of, um, it gives you the level, the competence and description of what is required. You'll understand those when you get into. But for us to uh, just dive in too deep, our reason for being is, is to study financial accounting, which is paper one. And I just want to run to, um, to where the syllabus starts from for financial accounting. So as we can see, we have a syllabus chart our uh, financial accounting is the first paper, but the knowledge you're going to gain on this paper will help you even along the journey when you're doing your financial reporting paper on, on level two, uh, when you're doing advanced financial reporting, which is paper 13, and uh, when you're also doing the public uh, financial management, which is paper 14. Now, the over, of course, uh, the overall aim uh, of, uh, of, of this paper is to enable you learn and gain skills and knowledge in regards to bookkeeping and preparation of financial statements. So I know that by you joining the CPA course, you have an idea of what an accountant basically does. But this paper is giving you the principles uh, in regards to bookkeeping. And bookkeeping, you need to be able to learn what are some of the books of accounts that we do prepare from the prime uh, entry books, uh, the books of original entry, uh, coming down to, uh, to the ledgers, the trial balance, uh, and, and so on. Uh, things like sales order books, purchase order books, there are quite a number of them. So you'll be able to interface with those as we study through cash book, uh, the general journal. So to see um, what information goes in each of those respective uh, books that I'm talking about. And that is what uh, this, uh, this paper is going to give you insights to. And of course, preparation of financial statements. Uh, I'm also, um, I want to believe that you have an idea of uh, what uh, the financial statements are. And that uh, starts from uh, the statement of comprehensive income down to um, the statement of financial position, uh, the statement of changes in equity, the uh, statement of cash flows, uh, the notes to accounts, yes. So you'll be able to know um, how do I prepare uh, for financial statements. One of the interesting bit of it is that we're also going to learn also um, how do we prepare financial statements for each of uh, the different enterprises. If it's a sole proprietorship, how does uh, the financial statements look like. If it's, uh, maybe it's a trading company or it's a manufacturing company, we'll be able to learn how each of those uh, are uh, and then so on, money for profit and so on. So quite a number of them will be able to just uh, dive, uh, dive deep into to learn. So we have our learning outcomes. Uh, and as you can see, uh, this is to help you understand the role of accounting and accountants. Why do accountants exist? I think nearly uh, in every organization you find an accountant. Some people may not be uh, 
qualified uh, as accountants, but they are performing accounting roles. As long as there's flow of money coming in, uh, we have people who are actually uh, doing accounting. So that is quite important. So you will also be able to know uh, the financial reporting framework. Now, accounting is uh, just like medicine, just like law. We have governing uh, rules. We have way of how we do things. So the source of how we do things is a financial reporting framework. And this may include uh, things to do like with IFRSs. This may include uh, things to do with um, the Company Act uh, or uh, IPSAS, if it's uh, government public sector reporting. Uh, and then uh, currently there's also um, there's, uh, a process for uh, getting standards, reporting standards for uh, people in the nanny for profit sector. But for your uh, for this class, you'll not be getting into there. Uh, you'll be uh, getting into to understand a few things, uh, especially the standards that relate to um, uh, profit businesses like uh, IS2 relating to inventory, uh, IS16 relating to plant property and equipment. Uh, so uh, standards like those. Uh, and then we'll be able to understand uh, the different forms of business entities. I, like I said, um, uh, when we are preparing financial statements, it's very important to understand which entity you're preparing for. Because every entity, because of their nature, have different uh, ways of how they present their financial statements. And you, you also need to just also remember that financial statements are presented based on the needs of the users, okay? And uh, the reporting framework also provides us guidelines on how we should prepare financial statements. IS1 is very key when it comes to presentation of financial statements. So we're going to get into uh, depth uh, on some of those things. So I want you to uh, be inspired, motivated on this journey. Um, I've taught this uh, paper for quite uh, a while and um, I don't know how many years now but for quite a while. And I think I, my first interface with accounting was in uh, 2000, uh, I think 2006 or seven, around there, uh, six, around six, 2006. So from 2006 to that, I've been able to deep dive into this financial accounting. So I've had quite a number of students go through this journey and they have really, really succeeded. Um, getting marks to over 90s and so on uh, in marks. So it's very important that for you, even as you join on this paper, you're not joining as um, somebody who just wants to come in and get the 50 and get off the paper. I want you to come with a mind of excellence, a mind that I'm coming to excel in this paper. I'm coming to get uh, the best result out of this paper. So it's very important because you are an accountant and uh, at the end of the day, accountants are excellent people because you're handling a very critical aspect of the business. So you need to be able to know your numbers. If the numbers go wrong, much likely even whatever uh, the business is doing will go wrong. So it's quite important for you to uh, just have that into a uh, picture. So the other thing that for us we need also to appreciate is uh, uh, how to record transactions in the books of prime entry. Ledgers are uh, using double entry uh, booking uh, system, double entry booking, bookkeeping system. So you must have heard about debit or credit. And uh, debit and credit are the two most common words in accounting. If you're joining accounting for the very first time, these are things you're going to, um, to understand. Why do we debit assets when they increase? Why do we credit our capital when it increases? Why do we go on to our, our credit liabilities when they increase? And why do we do the, the reverse, like uh, debiting uh, uh, our capital when it's reducing? Or what, why do we debit our expenses when they are increasing? So all that we'll be able to understand. But then also uh, they're talking about the books of prime entry. And you remember what I said about the books of prime entry? These are books where transactions are recorded for the very first time before you can transfer the, uh, the transactions to two ledgers. And these are your so-called uh, sales order books, purchases order books, uh, return inwards order books, and so on. So 
this is all important for you to be able to acquaint yourself with the knowledge of what you need to be doing when it comes to uh, these books. Of course, in the modern accounting, and I'll honestly say, uh, some of these things you not really interface them at the workplace. And I also understand that some of you who are joining in for this paper are people who are, who are employed. And when you hear some of these concepts, you're like, okay, I've not interfaced this, uh, with these in my workplace. How do they apply? So these days we have, of course, uh, accounting systems. And what accounting systems do is that they help you encompass these uh, different uh, documents and so on in the back in the back end of the system. So although you're not able to uh, see them directly, but you just need to have an idea and an understanding of what is the background to them and what do they do? Because even the developers of these accounting systems have get this understanding of how book supreme entry works, how ledgers work, how the double entry works, and they able to develop uh, uh, systems. I'll give you an example. I've used QuickBooks before. Uh, with QuickBooks, it has a platform where you can enter a bill, and uh, that's like an invoice. So when you enter that invoice, to you, you may not easily know that you're actually, in the background, you're, you're debiting, uh, let's say maybe it's, it's, it's an invoice from your suppliers. It, it, you're not able to see that maybe you're, you're debiting your expense, and you're crediting your, uh, your creditors or your suppliers when you enter that bill. But that is actually what is happening. And even when you run your GL, your general ledger, that will actually come into handy. But since these are principles, it's good for us to know the principles because at the end of the day, even when you get that report, uh, let's say it's a financial accounting report, you're able to know how did these numbers come up, okay? So it's uh, quite important for you to, uh, to know how all this come into play. Uh, and then, of course, there's one thing I'm going to interest you in, and I will be, able, will be looking at this in the next classes. It's called the accounting cycle. And by accounting cycle, we are looking at where do we start from? Where do transactions start from? Transactions uh, start uh, from the initial stages. I've talked about the books of prime entry. But it's also what we call the source documents. Now, source documents are is like an LPO. Source documents are like an invoice. Source documents is like a receipt. Those are the initial, initial documents. When you issue a receipt to a customer, that is the initial stage of the transaction. That transaction then moves into the books of prime entry, which, you, which I already gave you examples, the, the books uh, that we have. And then from the day books, of the books of prime entry, now we move down to your so-called um, trial balance, ledgers. Ledgers, then trial balance. Now, ledgers uh, is where the double entry happens. And once we have gotten information to the ledgers, we then balance this off and then transfer into trial, trial balance. We transfer the balances. And then from there, of course, we do quite a number of reconciliations in case we have lesser errors, the suspense account will come into play in case we have to, um, let's say, get into, um, for example, uh, bank reconciliation, we'll do reconciliation in there. So we're going to be able to learn. And even as you can see, the next item here on uh, our listing is actually a preparation of uh, a trial balance. So the trial balance is basically a debit credit listing the balances, what we have under... Uh, let's say assets, what we have on liabilities, listing each of the balances. And if you, uh, you know that our key uh, aim is to prepare financial statements. So when you have your trial balance, well balanced off, then you're at a point in time when you can prepare your financial statements. Of course, taking into consideration also something that I'm also going to talk about, what is called end of year adjustments. So things like depreciation, things like provisions, things like um, accruals and repayments, which are usually end of year adjustments. Those will also come into handy when we are now um, getting down to look at aspects of how we prepare our financial statements. And then of course, correcting errors. I already uh, hinted something to do with the suspense account that in most cases you find that uh, 
your trial balance may not balance, or it may actually balance, but it balances does not mean there are no errors. And when it doesn't balance, of course, it's very clear that there are actually errors. So you'll be able to learn about what are some of the errors that affect the trial balance and what are some of those errors that do not affect the trial balance. And that means that your trial balance will actually balance despite you committing some of those errors, like errors of commission. When you change the name of uh, the customer that you're selling to uh, from John to Johnson, uh, if you, these are, those are two different people, but you, instead of recording one, you use another person's name. Such a transaction may never be depicted by the balance of your trial balance, but it's an error that you need to correct to be able to uh, correct the balances in the respective accounts. So that will be able to understand things like arithmetic errors, which come now into the aspect of errors that affect the trial balance. Those we shall be able to look at. And then reconcile financial uh, transactions. Uh, I talked about the bank reconciliation, which is a very key topic in this paper where you're looking at your cash book, uh, the bank column of the cash book, but you're also looking at um, the bank statement to be able to compare the two. I deposited money on this day, but it reflects in my cash book and it reflects here, like that. So uh, quite important. And then uh, we get down to um, aspects like uh, preparing your financial statements, I already hinted about that, based on the entity. It's the same. It's a balance sheet, but it relates to, say, a private entity. It relates to a public entity. It relates to a non for profit. So they they quite similar, but they could have some um, uh, differences that you'll be able to note even as we proceed. And then we have preparing accounts and financial statements from incomplete records. So we live in society where we have quite a number of businesses that do not have accountants in place. So these businesses record accounting information based on what they think is important to them. So they may record, let's say, um, uh, the account receivables, the people that they have sold to on credit, or even this uh, accounts payables, the people they have bought uh, from on credit. They may also record things like uh, cash that is moving in and cash that is coming out. But at the end of the day, they need financial statements. Uh, we understand that financial statements have different uses. Uh, some people that get some of these financial statements are people who are either you want a loan from the bank and they're asking for providers financial statements. Uh, the tax body, uh, which is uh, URF for Uganda, may be interested in this information to be able to assess and understand what is your tax. Uh, these days when you're bidding for different, um, let's say supplies, when you want to supply to organizations, they're asking you, please provide us with your financial statements. So there could be different various reasons that why these entities that might have incomplete records may need uh, these financial statements. And that means that you, who is the accountant, you need now to come into play to be able to now be able to prepare these financial statements to help such kind of businesses. So we'll be able to understand how do we use those financial statements that seem to be incomplete to be able to come up with financial statements. So those are some of the things that are in there. And then we have, of course, to be able to apply uh, selected international financial reporting standards. Those are quite a number. I already uh, highlighted that in this paper, you will be able to learn about things like um, maybe IS2, IS16, We'll look at uh, the standard for provisions, quite a few. Um, and this at this level, it's just to get you into uh, the journey of your uh, of your financial accounting journey. You'll be able to do uh, most of um, those uh, financial accounting to do uh, standards, especially when you when you get to your second level, which is uh, the second level paper, which is financial reporting. But for this level, you just get insights into uh, the reporting standards, but also just to understand how are these standards set, okay? Uh, that is important. And then, of course, uh, describing the ethical responsibilities and challenges of accountants. Now, you know, accountants, we deal with the very critical aspect of the business, which is money. And um, in the same way, the information that we produce uh, in the day-to-day uh, of our, our work as accountants is information that is used by quite a number of users. 
So over and over time, we are faced with uh, certain areas of uh, ethics in terms of uh, being objective, reporting without bias, uh, professional due care, and so on. So we need to be able to uh, see how do we maintain uh, to have no conflict of interest and so on. So we'll be able to understand what are some of the ethical responsibilities what are some of the areas of ethics? And even as you as a professional accountant, these are some of the areas that will now need, uh, will, will need to be addressed because if you're a certified public accountant, you're actually a regulated accountant that cannot just do anything, uh, but you need to be able to understand what ethical requirements are needed of you, okay? So that is quite important. So those are just kind of our learning outcomes. And when you get into uh, the syllabus, you'll be able to see um, quite a number of uh, details of each of uh, our course, um, course outline for this paper or syllabus, okay? Now, uh, in terms of assessment, uh, I'll sh just share with you one of the paper that was set in 2023. So this is usually a three hours paper and usually has sec two sections. That is section A and section B. Section A are usually multi choice questions where you, you se select uh, out of let's say four options and then you answer them. And those are usually 20 multi choice questions. Now section B uh, has five questions and you do four of them. So when you look at um, your so-called section uh, B, which is usually in most of the past papers, you'll be able to see some of the questions. Now, to you who have done uh, financial accounting at lower levels, this paper will really be friendly to you because there's a lot of transfer of knowledge, especially those that did accounting related degrees, this paper will be related knowledge. Even those that did maybe accounting at A level, uh, or you have done this at diploma level, there's some level of uh, transfer of knowledge that you'll be able to get across this journey. So I encourage you to be able to, um, to just revive some of the knowledge that you have already for this paper. So I want to say that uh, this paper, like you're seeing, uh, we have different questions here. They're very friendly questions. And when you register with ICPAU, you sh you, you're able to get access to, to this, uh, the platform that has some of these past papers, but also you're able to get some of the solutions. During our study, we'll be able to use most of these uh, past papers to just ensure that uh, we are also, we're not just getting the knowledge, but we are also preparing ourselves for that D day of the exam, okay? So quite important. So what, what do I want to say? Um, I want to say that uh, I welcome you officially to this uh, financial accounting journey. And uh, to some of you that have followed uh, some of uh, information that I put out there, you get to realize that um, I have a, a very good experience. Um, I have over now 10 years of experience in financial accounting. And uh, right now um, I'm working with uh, one of the big four audit firms, uh, that's uh, KPMG. So my knowledge is uh, quite fast and one of the things you will get from my classes is I teach from the practical view. I want you know, to not only just teach you this course for passing exams, but I also want to make you a better accountant. I've held various uh, positions ranging from accountant, finance manager, finance lead, and I've now gone on to uh, become uh, a financial management consultant. So this is knowledge that uh, I have gained over time and you'll be able to acquaint yourself along the journey. I have taught this paper and I have quite a number of videos that I have done on each of the topics. And actually when you join our classes, one of the things that I do is provide you access to some of these videos that I've done in the past. And even when we meet for some of the classes, you're asking me some of how do I do ABCD? What do I need to do when it comes to such a question? And then we are able to interact and that prepares you well even for the exam. So joining our classes is one of the best decisions you'll actually make uh, for your CPA journey. And I want to tell you that uh, this paper is one of the easiest papers to pass. And one of the strategies I'll tell you is you have to practice as much as possible, okay? 
So that is quite important if you want to pass this paper. So I hope this is helpful. Um, to those that are watching this video from somewhere, I'm going to uh, just leave um, um, my number, which is uh, 070. I know that there are those that have, uh, have just joined in from uh, uh, maybe another platform, but I just want to share my number, which is uh, 070-380-3255. You can find this on WhatsApp if you, uh, you're in another country, it's uh, plus two five six, uh, like that. So you can be able to, to reach out and I'm able to provide you with some guidance in regards to the next steps. Just want to make sure that you can see this number. I'm also open to uh, questions uh, in regards to to see how to help you. So it's plus two five six seven zero three eight zero thirty two fifty five. Just send me a WhatsApp and say I would like to uh, be part of the class. Uh, if you're part of our WhatsApp group, uh, good to know, and uh, we'll be able to share some of the materials there. When you join this program, you're not just provided with, um, uh, let's say, uh, these videos, but we provide you with some notes that can help you in your study, and then we're able to always interact. So I really appreciate um, all of you that have joined in live in this class, and uh, good to know that you're always looking out for knowledge and a way to learn and add value to yourself. So uh, I want to, uh, to pause here and ask if we, um, we have any question, uh, if you, do not have you can be able to also just share it in uh, the chat box be able to uh, for me to be able to, to, to so over to you um to those that are watching this we have uh, any questions 